All right, my name is Sean Gatenby, and uh, today I'm going to go over a demonstration of the TLS Triple Handshake vulnerability. Uh, and so, over here you see I have a, uh, I have both my VMs open. I have the client VM, which is going to be our our uh, user who's trying to connect to the server, and I have the attacker VM, uh, which is going to run MITM proxy or man in the middle proxy. Uh, and then our server is going to be Google.com or Facebook, anything that the client wants to connect to uh, over HTTPS. So, and then I also have Wireshark, which is listening to the output of client C, and then I have Wireshark listening to the input out and output of uh, the attacker VM. So first off, let's go ahead and open up IceWeasel, uh, which is Debian's rebranded version of uh, Firefox. So once that guy opens, um, well, let's restart this. Uh, this is just presumably Ice Weasel doing things in the background, so let's clear that. Let's go to Facebook. Um, okay, so this is before we've modified anything. I just want to show that uh, there's only one client hello and server hello. There's so the, the way the way the man in the middle uh, proxy works is it creates a full SSL connection between the client and itself and then another connection between itself and the server the client was initially trying to connect to. So it sits in the middle, and since it has the decryption keys, because um, it completed the actual SSL connection, it knows how to decrypt everything. And so you'll see later on that we're able to modify um, web pages and uh, without the user knowing. The only way the user knows is uh, the certificate is not valid. So we'll, we'll go over that. So as you can see, there's nothing on the uh, uh, attacker's Wireshark collect. Uh, because it went directly to Facebook. So you see the, cl the client hellos. Um, it made two external connections um, to Facebook. So you have the client hello, server hello for the 66.220 IP address, and there should be another server hello down here somewhere. That's uh, for 31. Yeah, okay. So anyway, this is legitimate connection. If we look at the certificate, um, it said it's signed by Digicert. So, oops, open it twice. Yeah, signed by Digicert. So this is a valid certificate. Um, my browser didn't complain. So we can do the same thing for Google. Let's re clear that out. We'll go to my keyboard. All right, so we see the client hello to Google, server hello from Google, um, and again, there's no data on the man in the middle Wireshark. We'll check certificates again. All right, same thing, signed by Google, um, valid certificate. So let's close these out actually. Reset that. Reopen Ice Weasel. But this time we're going to configure it for a proxy and we're going to fire up the um, MITM proxy. So, like I said earlier, uh, the proxy sits between the client and the server uh, and can modify the traffic since it has the encryption de decryption keys for both full SSL connections. So, it's going to perform, perform two handshakes and we'll see that um, in the the Wireshark collect from the attacker VM. Message coming in. So, let's first configure Ice Weasel for proxy. So we're, we're going to manually tell it, when you make a, an SSL connection or an HTTPS connection, I want you to connect to the attacker VM. That's just for, in this, for this case, it makes it easier for us. Um, but in the real world, you can have somebody doing a, a DNS exploit so that when you go to google.com, instead of going to that, it goes to your proxy first. So this is just to make it easier on us. Um, but in the real world, you don't have to do that. There's many ways of getting around uh, and intercepting traffic. So fired up MITM proxy. Um, the, uh, the flags, so minus P gives you the port that you want to connect to, and Z just tells it to ask the server to uh, not zip anything not compress anything. And that, that makes it easier for us to modify the HTML, otherwise we'd have to uh, download the binary, decrypt it, it would be a pain in the butt. 
So that makes it easier. So this is going to start up a server on the attacker VM, listening for port 443. So when we go to facebook.com, uh, from the client again, this time the certificate's going to be different. It's going to be the certificate signed by MIT on proxy. Now I actually added that ahead of time, um, but uh, the user, it's going gonna, it's gonna to prompt the user and say, hey, this certificate isn't valid. Do you want to accept it? Do you want to continue? And if the user says yes, then there's nothing, there's no way for them to tell that, you know, somebody's listening to their traffic other than them knowing there's an invalid certificate. So if, it, if an unknowing uh, user accepts that, then the attacker now has full control over everything. So let's go to uh, facebook.com. I need to turn off caps lock. Oh. So there's something messed up with the way I have the certificate set up, but if you wait a minute till it goes to 806, then it'll allow you to connect. But so it actually started the key exchange um, to the MIT on proxy. So 172.16.0.103, that's the client VM, and at 104 is the uh, is this guy, the attacker VM. So you see this is it got the connection. It said it's a bad certificate. So let's try it again. Let's clear this out, actually. Okay, so should be connecting. So here you can see all the traffic that's coming through, all the GET requests, um, and we can modify this on the fly, which is really cool. And sometimes it doesn't load fully, so we'll try it again until it loads everything. Okay, so if we go here at the very top, you can see there's the client hello going from client A to attacker, client, sorry, client C to attacker A. And it sets up this connection, so you see the change cipher spec um, and the final message. So it completes a handshake between the attacker VM. And then the attacker VM goes, goes ahead and makes another SSL request, a connection request, to the actual Facebook servers. So it's actually completing two handshakes. Uh, it's well, technically, it's it's called triple handshake because you have three people in the handshake. You have the client, you have the attacker, and you have the server. So, which is why it's triple handshake. So there's there's two completely different SSL connections between client and the proxy, and the proxy and the server. So what we can do now is really cool. Um, we can say, I want you to intercept. Oh, where's uh, where's the initial get request? Yeah, we'll do this one. So if you look at this, um, edit it, and go over to the response, this is, here, let me make this bigger actually, um, this is the HTML that actually creates this page. So we can modify this on the fly as it's coming back from facebook.com so that it shows up differently on um, in the client's browser. So let's go ahead and go back out of here. We're going to add a new filter. I want you to intercept everything from dot Facebook. If I can type, we'll intercept that, and we'll try it again. Let's reload this page. Uh, and the way man's, uh, MIT on proxy works, once you tell it to filter something, uh, it'll show up as orange. So it stopped the get request. We want to allow the get, that get request through, but we want to intercept the response. So here's the response. We want to edit, the, edit this um, by pressing E on that page. And then tab gets you over to the uh, tab switches between request and response intercepted. So we're going to press tab and go over to response intercepted. And we want to edit this, so you press E again, and then R for raw body. Okay, so what do we want to edit? I think I want to change this to be sign up or else. So let's search for sign up. And found one, that's not the one we want. Press end next. Okay, so here it is, sign up. So let's insert or else. Okay, and then over here there's also it's free and always will be. So we'll add something else here to say thanks to the oops. copious amounts of ads. Okay, so uh, I don't know if I can put a semicolon. Whatever. We'll see what happens. It may not like that. So if we save it and write it, 
this is now modified. So we, if we press escape to go back out to the original screen, sorry, Q to go out to the original one, we can say, I want you to allow this to go through. So that's shift A. That'll send everything through. So now, when the user looks at Facebook, it's been modified. It now says sign up or else it's free and always will be, thanks to the copious amount of ads. So this is just saying that, um, oh, there's one more thing that's cool too, I'll show you. But it's saying that once you make that connection uh, to the man in the middle proxy, it can modify anything. It can insert malicious JavaScript. It can, you know, when you click on sign up instead of sending that request, it can have you download a virus. I mean, it, the, the possibilities are endless. So one thing I want to notice too, um, if we look at the certificate information, it's no longer signed by DigiSign or DigiCert. This is now a self-signed cert by MIT on proxy. So again, I added this, but if the user accepts it and it adds it to the, the um, cert certificate repository, it looks like it's secure, right? It doesn't say, oh, this has been, uh, this is an invalid cert, invalid site. So, um, and this is just because it's, you're not connecting to facebook.com, you're connecting to MIT on proxy, which is then connecting to facebook.com. So something else that's cool, like let, let's say, uh, let's say we wanna um, sign in. So let's do a, I don't know, let's say we have MIT on proxy at google.com and our password is, well, I don't know, if I don't tell you, we'll still be able to see it. So let's, uh, okay. So let's do, actually, I want to, I want to get rid of this filter. So let's not filter anything. Let's log in, capture this traffic. So if we look here for a login attempt, we open it, we'll see, oh, I want to go back to the request, so press tab. So if we go back to the request, you'll see right here, it decrypted everything that got sent in that HTML form. So even though it's a password field, and it didn't look like, it looked like it was, you know, not encrypted, but you can't see what it is, uh, MIT on proxy is able to decrypt everything. So. This is also a very cool tool if you want to see what data is actually being sent between devices that you have and external servers. Um, but uh, yeah, so not, not, not only can we modify web pages, we can also um, view anything that get, that's sent encrypted over that connection. So pretty scary stuff. But uh, so that's that's the demo. That's the demo of a triple handshake. And again, basically, client connects to proxy, proxy connects to server, uh, you have two separate SSL connections, um, and it allows them to decrypt everything. So anyway, thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or if I messed anything up and you want to correct me, please leave a message down below, and uh, hope you guys have a great day.